What's going on gamers? Welcome back to another Top 3 Tuesday episode. I'm your host, Russ Lyman. Well, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, extreme sports was the thing. You can check out on the X Games, seeing a lot of those sports there, and of course, video games, how to get into it as well. So we're going to be counting down my Top 3 Extreme Sports Games. Now I tried my best at some sports, BMX, rollerblading, snowboarding, skateboarding. I wasn't fantastic at it, but I was still able to do it. But I couldn't mimic those awesome moves that I saw the pros do. So playing video games was the next best thing. So coming in at number three is... Number three! Courier Crisis on the PlayStation. This game I discovered at Blockbuster Video. I rented it because the cover looked pretty fun and it reminded me of a few other similar games with sports. You take control of a bicyclist who has to deliver certain items around town. At the start of the level, in the top, in the middle, it will show you how many letters you need to deliver for that stage. There will be people who have a yellow arrow over them with a package for you to deliver. In the top left of the screen you'll see a directional arrow showing you where to go. You get cash for completing this task and you continue on. All the levels are set in city-like environments, but they do a good job of each level feeling new and not monotonous. Some sections have tall skyscraper type buildings, and then you get a more neighborhood feel with some local mom and pop shops or your local bar area. Another great mechanic in the game is that you can kick and punch the pedestrians on the street. It's kind of cruel, but funny at the same time. While riding along, you could also do a few tricks, and they'll let you know what trick you pulled off in the bottom left, and you'll get some extra cash too for it. it kind of has a Tony Hawk meets Crazy Taxi vibe to it, and it was highly addicting, and I love playing all the levels and unlocking more bikes in costumes. It was a fun game to play for the weekend that didn't take much effort. Just ride your bike, deliver the package, and maybe knock a few guys out along the way. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see too many people talk about this game, so it's definitely a fun one to check out if you see it at your thrift store or next convention, and it's pretty cheap as well. Moving on to the next extreme sport from biking to the mountains, coming in at number two. Number two! Cool Borders. Now, I definitely enjoyed the Cool Borders series. I played a majority of them, but mostly played number two. During high school, I was able to join the ski club in which I sold enough candy bars to pay for a trip and I didn't want to ski because snowboarding was way cooler. But I wasn't great at it and I ended up fracturing my wrist going down the board park portion on the first night. So video game snowboarding was where it was at. I really enjoyed the Cool Border series. It had a few different characters you could choose from. But I always played as this girl with the pigtails because she looked cool. It was broken down into few section, competition, freestyle, big air, and half pipe. That way you could practice each one before you went into the competition and compete it. This one took some getting used to. It was kind of like a race car game going down the mountain. You didn't want to oversteer and end up going over the edge and plummeting to your doom. Or steer too fast that so you just spin around and lose momentum. The commentator was pretty hilarious, and he makes fun of you if you can't pull off a trick. I'm cool! Or if you don't place to make the next round. This game was certainly a safer way to go snowboarding and have some fun with it. I still try to go to the mountain, but I never go fast, and I'm always afraid I'm catching my edge and tumbling down. I do wear wrist guards now when I go, though. Okay, finish! <laughs> Yeah, it is winter time and we're getting some snow here in Connecticut, but I have yet to go back to the mountains, so maybe I'll just stick to playing this game. Well guys, before I get to my number one, of course I want to mention an honorable mention on the original NES, and that is Skate or Die. This was the first extreme sports game that I played. It being on the NES, it was kind of limited to what it could achieve as far as controls and gameplay, but that didn't stop me from playing it a lot. I love the shop guy. He kind of looked like a punk rock version of Rodney Dangerfield. If I don't get no respect, no respect from anyone. 
The downhill jam was probably my favorite section. You got to race someone else and kick and punch them going through this alley, and when you got to the end, I always had to ollie right on top of the cop car, and its sirens would go off, and that was pretty cool. The one event, though, I hated the most was the high jump. No matter how hard I hit the darn buttons, I couldn't get any momentum in that darn thing. It certainly was a fun game and came out in a time when skateboarding was pretty big. So us kids who couldn't skate, this was our next best option. Now like I said, I certainly can't skateboard that great, but I know someone who can. Great job, Riff. All right, getting into my number one extreme game is... Number one! Well, of course, Tony Hawk. This is gonna end up pretty much on anyone's top list for extreme sports games or skateboarding games in general. Well, what can I say? You mentioned extreme sports games. Number one on most people's lists will be Tony Hawk games for sure. I first experienced this game on a PlayStation demo disc with a few other games. I was memorized for sure. The amount of tricks you could pull off was great. Grinding on almost anything in the game was cool. You could jump in the air and grind on an oncoming car. And let's not forget about the soundtrack. It certainly was amazing. It got me into bands like Goldfinger and The Vandals. And I loved how you could see the band playing the song on some big projector screens in certain levels. This was a great added touch. Having different tasks in each level to score a tape was a great idea. This gave it a ton of replay value and let you get better at the controls since some of the tapes you had to perform large jumps and grinds just to reach them. These were great games to rent for the weekend too because you saved all your progress onto your memory card. And this way next weekend you could go back to Blockbuster and rent it again and pick up where you left off. Or heck, even bring your memory card over to your friend's house who had the game and have at it with them. And I haven't played any of the recent Tony Hawk games, but I know I definitely had a blast playing the classic ones. Well, there we go, guys. My top list of extreme sports games. There's definitely a few that I didn't mention, so I'm curious to hear what yours are. Leave them in the comment section down below. And well, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you guys want to check out my channel and some of the stuff I do, there'll be a link in the description down below. As always, guys, I'm Russ Lyman, and keep your world fun bit by bit. I'll see you next video.